let's go to Baton Rouge. Not literally. That would be, you know, logistically challenging to coordinate because hopefully plenty of you are watching or listening to this particular segment. Thanks for doing that, by the way. The LSU Tigers have to make the playoff. Got to make the playoff this year. Now, I say that, and your first thought might be, and then what? And then fire Brian Kelly, who's 20 and 7 in his two years as LSU's head coach, who's got a contract that runs through 2031 that's among the most lucrative in all of college football. Would you fire Brian Kelly if he doesn't make the playoff this year? No, I wouldn't. But the, the conversations would start to get rolling. I'm not saying Brian Kelly goes to the hot seat. Let's say his seat is rather cold right now. It's, it's very cold. It would get room temperature, right? It would go from frozen solid to room temperature if LSU misses the playoff this year. He would not move into the hot seat. He would definitely move into the, let's talk about it, or you got to make the playoff in 2025 or it's hot seat time. Because that, that would be four years without a playoff appearance at LSU. And is is that acceptable? And in, in the 12-team era? Now, two of those years would be in the four-team playoff. That's a lot harder to make. I'll grant you that. He took over a tough situation and has, has rebuilt and reestablished the standard that LSU has historically had. A, a program that has won a national title multiple times a century. There aren't very many programs that can say that, by the way. They are, they are few and far between. Now, Brian Kelly has not won a national championship himself, but is certainly capable of doing so at LSU. And you obviously can't do that if you don't get to the playoff. So if Brian Kelly and LSU don't make the playoff this year, I think fans are going to start to look around and say, what, what are we doing here? Like, like these, aren't, these aren't bad results. Let's say LSU goes 9-3, and three, misses the playoff. Well, it wouldn't be. It's not a bad season. It's not, you know, Ed Orgeron's last year or anything of that sort. It's it's just not what we'd like it to be. So the question then becomes, has LSU made the offseason moves to get to the playoff? Yes. Yeah, the, the, the answer there is an unequivocal yes, they have. A couple wide receivers to take note of because Garrett Nussmeyer is expected to be the quarterback down there for, for the LSU Tigers. And that's someone who has immense potential, who's, who has been patiently waiting in the era of transferring out and not staying committed to a school amidst a coaching change and everything like that. Garrett Nussmeyer, that, that guy is an LSU Tiger through and through. <coughs> and I'll get to Garrett Nussmeyer more here in just a second, but... When you lose a player of Malik Neighbors' caliber, you, you ask the question, well, is there going to be a huge drop-off? There will be some sort of drop-off. But is LSU and their new quarterback going to be light on weapons? No. No, they're not. Xavier Thomas comes over from Mississippi State. C.J. Daniels, I, I tell you what, I think SEC fans are going to get to know C.J. Daniels pretty darn well in 2024. He comes over from Liberty, where he was playing under Jamie Chadwell, who's a very good college football coach, by the way. He is the only coach, to my knowledge, over the last two years to win a conference title in two different leagues in consecutive seasons. Coastal Carolina, and then Liberty, last year, in Conference USA. Not too shabby for Jamie Chadwell, but C.J. Daniels is a guy that I, I think, I don't think he puts up Malik Neighbors' sorts of numbers, but if he told me right now he has a 1,000-yard season, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be shocked. He's got that sort of talent. The question is, what sort of chemistry can he develop with Garrett Nussmeyer? And I'll, I'll go out on a limb with another flaming hot take and say that Nussmeyer will not throw for almost 4,000 yards, run for over 1,100, and account for 50 touchdowns en route to winning the Heisman Trophy. The good news is for LSU to make the playoff, he doesn't need to sniff those numbers. He doesn't. He's got to be able to protect the football, and he's got to be able to create some explosive plays, and certainly LSU, with a new defensive staff he'll get to in just a moment, is going to be a different team because I think they're going to be a better team. Now, does that mean that their offense will be as good as last year? No. 
but there wasn't as much. I've heard this about weight loss before. If, if you're trying to lose a lot of weight, depending on where you're starting from, the, the first, let's say, 40 pounds you lose are a lot easier to lose than the next 40 pounds. Like, if I wanted to lose 20 pounds, which would would, would be difficult for me because I don't weigh a ton, but certainly I could drop 20 pounds, maybe, then I'd be a little light. Let's say 10. Let's say I want to lose 10 pounds. The first five are going to be a lot easier to lose than the next five. This sort of thinking applies to LSU's offense and defense because LSU's defense, specifically, was really bad last year. It was very bad. The LSU Ole Miss game is burn the tape and then some. Whatever you can do, you got to go full Ted 2 on that. The way they destroy a particular laptop whose contents I shall not repeat on this show because we're family friendly here at the Locked On Network. That's what needed to happen with the defensive tape in that LSU Ole Miss game last season. So LSU's defense isn't going to be under Blake Baker, their new defensive coordinator, who was there a couple years ago, just had a great year at Missouri, helped the Tigers have an 11-win season. That's going to improve. The question is how much? Is it going to be the best defense Blake Baker ever has as LSU's defensive coordinator? If he's the guy that we think he is, probably not. But you can improve that defense a lot faster then you can improve LSU's offense, which really can't get that much better from a season ago, because the first five are a lot easier to lose than the next five or the last five. That's just the way it works. You can come in and make baseline changes right off the bat. I think Blake Baker will be able to do that. And and certainly with LSU's roster, he's not going to be void of talent down there. I mean, as you go through LSU schedule, how many times are they going to be out talented on the field? I don't know. Once? Maybe none in the first five. USC, Nichols, South Carolina, UCLA, South Alabama. Nope. Ole Miss, maybe. I think Ole Miss's roster is great. There's one. Texas A&M. Ah! That's probably beauty is in the eye of the beholder right there. Alabama. Yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe Bama. Maybe, not not definitively, but may, that's it. Everybody else, Florida, Vanderbilt, Oklahoma, Arkansas, that's only two teams that you can definitively say, yeah, they've got a better roster than Ole Miss. So Blake Baker inherits a team that allowed 28 points per game last year. It doesn't need to go down to 15. It doesn't need to be 10. Just get it down to like the low 20s. And if Garrett Nussmeyer, with his new weapons, is able to repeat the offensive success at an 85% clip of what they were a season ago, LSU will be a playoff team. But if Brian Kelly wants to avoid at least some murmurs, at least a little bit of light chatter, shall we say, he's got to be able to make the playoff. And with this schedule, he should be able to. This is a very favorable schedule. A lot will be decided week one in that game, September 1st in Las Vegas against USC. Who boy. Big, big implications going both ways. Every single conference has got a dark horse contender. Every single Power Four conference has got multiple dark horse contenders, by the way. I'm going to give you the best one in every single league. 